morning and welcome to my next video log. Winter's certainly landed at Billanook in the last couple of days and it's been really, really quite cold. This week um, we've got a very special video log this week because um, it, it's, a, it's a very important uh, time in the life of the school. Um, it's a time of, of sadness but also um, of celebrating the enormous contribution of Cheryl Mutabazi, Deputy Principal at the school who, as you would know, um, concludes her time in that position at the end of this term. Cheryl's, uh, Cheryl's been at Billanook for 28 years and she is, what I always say, is the holder of the flame of the school. And so I thought it would be wonderful for uh, Zoe and Lenny, our middle school captains, to spend a little bit of time with Cheryl, uh, providing her with the opportunity to reflect on her time at the school and um, the things that she feels makes Billanook such a great school. So I hope you enjoy. Thank you. When did you begin your Billanook journey and what made you decide to stay? Okay, when I started at Billanook it was 1986 and that was just six years after the school had started. Uh, I started at Billanook because prior to that I'd been teaching in government schools for 10 years and I'd been at three different government schools and they wouldn't let me go back to teach part-time. I just had my second baby and uh, she was two years old and I was ready to come back to work. And at that point I wanted to work part-time because of my family. I had two girls and um, I really wanted to spend time with them as well. However, in the government sector, at that stage, all the teachers had numbers, depending on when they were first appointed. And the school I was teaching at actually had a part-time position. The principal at that school wanted me to go back to that school and was ready to offer me a part-time position. But because of my number, the government, the Department of Education said, no, 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 you can't offer her that position. She has to come back full time. So at that point, I started looking for other jobs. And I was living in Upway and I was thinking about Billanook as a school for my girls. And I thought, what better way to find out what the school's like than to actually teach in it. So I saw an advertisement uh, for, for vacancies at Billanook and decided to apply. And the rest is history. You ask me why I stayed. I stayed at Billanook. I didn't expect to stay a whole 28 years. But the reason that I stayed at Billanook was because Billanook gave me the opportunity to do a whole range of different things. So in the time that I've been here, I've had at least two different careers. So I spent um, about six years teaching senior English. Um, loved, just loved year 12 English. And then I moved out of the classroom into what was called a human resources position. One of the first in our schools in Melbourne. There were only five schools in Melbourne who had human resource specialists. And what that meant was that this school was making a commitment to our staff. And we were seeing that our teachers and our staff were critically important to the success of the school and the success of learning. So my role was actually to set up the HR function in the school because we hadn't had one previously. So that meant that all the recruitment policies, all the occupational health and safety policies, all those sorts of policies associated with, um, with employment and welfare of staff were those that I developed. So that was a whole new career for me. Um, I stepped out of teaching. Mind you, that was really hard to do. It was really hard. Um, and I have to say that in the first year after stepping out of the classroom, I kind of, I kind of had a, a worked through a grieving process um, because it was a change. I was giving something up. 
Um, and what I was giving up was that classroom interaction and the relationship with students, the really close relationship that teachers have with students. Um, but it gave me a whole new perspective. And then, uh, 10 years later, I took on the role of deputy principal. Uh, and that was something that I hadn't ever expected when I started at Bill and either. And that was another learning journey. So I've spent my life at Billinook learning, um, and that's why I've stayed. If I had been doing the same thing year after year after year, I'd have had to leave. What Billinook has given me is the opportunity to grow. Um, you said that you stepped out of teaching. What made you step out of teaching, and what did you do in that time before you became deputy principal? That was, that was my human resources management position. I, I had been really excited by teaching and loved teaching. Uh, but at that point I felt, my goodness, I've just got these kids where I want them. You know, they're in a really good space and now I'm going to start all over again with another group. And it was at that point that I felt it's time to have a break from teaching. And so there's always a point in your life and in your career when you know that it's time to do something different. And fortunately for me, I was able to stay at Billinook and do something different. So 28 years has been a long time. What was your most memorable experience here at Billinook? Zoe, I've had so many. Yeah. <laughs> So many memorable experiences. It's been amazing. I remember when, um, when I first came here and uh, I'd come from a government school and still one of the things that sticks in my mind is I had a year 11 English class. The students said to me, I think we need more homework. And I went, what? I can't believe this. I went home to my husband and I said, this school is incredible. The kids are amazing. You know what they asked me today? For more homework. I couldn't believe it. So that was a pretty memorable experience given where I had come from. Um, other really memorable experiences are leading delegations internationally to Round Square conferences. So uh, we went to Kenya. Uh, which was extraordinary. Uh, that was that was 1996, so quite a long time ago now. Uh, but at that stage, Billinook was just the second school in Australia to be a round square school. So that was pretty extraordinary for us. And it was only at that conference that four other Melbourne schools were accepted to be members of Round Square. Uh, about 10 years later, uh, I went to India as well with the Round Square Conference, um, leading a, a delegation. So they've been pretty special moments. I've, I've taken a group to Malaysia and I've been to a conference with students, an environmental conference in Phuket, Thailand. And there, there were students from all over Thailand and the Education Minister for Thailand met with us as well because Billinook was the only Australian school, the only international school to go to this environmental conference. So that was pretty exciting. Memorable moments for me have been assemblies in the Peace Sanctuary. That's, they're pretty special, really special. Getting our 250 litre tanks, water tanks, was pretty exciting for me because I'd spent quite a long time applying for government grants to build our sustainability program. So we succeeded in getting half a million dollars. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? So I was jumping up and down. Um, and that enabled us to to complete our water project, getting $50,000 to put solar panels on the gym roof was also another memorable moment for me. Another extraordinary time for me 
was the um, the bushfires here not so long ago and what was really special about that was that a group of students from year nine actually came to the principal and said we really think we should do something to support our community because we had a number of families who were directly affected by the fires. Um, people lost their lives, um, people lost their homes, people lost their livelihoods and uh, it was a pretty extraordinary time. But what was really special about it was that the Billinook community came together to support our family and what they suggested was a dinner. So we had this amazing, absolutely amazing fundraising event in the gym. The gym was completely transported to another place, looked sensational. Um, I don't know how many people came to that dinner, but we had an auction. We auctioned wine. Uh, we auctioned football jumpers. We auctioned huge number of things, all of which were donated. And we raised $30,000. That was extraordinary. And then I was on the committee um, that actually determined where that money went. And we were able to support a whole range of families in a whole range of ways with the money, with the proceeds from that fundraising event. So I think that epitomises what Billinook's about. That, for me, was a really memorable moment. And the other one? Sorry, see, there are so many, so many memorable moments. The other one for me was just recently. It was last year. And um, it was a senior school assembly. And students were um, involved in public speaking at this senior school assembly. And at this assembly, uh, one of the students delivered the most extraordinary speech and as part of that speech um, actually came out and expressed their sexual orientation. That was an incredibly courageous thing to do. But what gave me goosebumps and almost made me cry and I even feel quite emotional about it now is the fact that everybody in the auditorium stood up and clapped and everyone was behind that person. To you know, it was just the most extraordinary, quite extraordinary experience because what that said was this is a really safe place to be. You know, that person felt and trusted that. Um, the people here would support him uh, and that, that I'll never forget that moment. Following on from that experience for you, um, what do you think, how do you think the school really supports people who are sexually differently orientated or even people who are with disability and come to this school? I think that's what's special about Billinock and has always been the case. Um, right from when I started here. One of the things that, um, that has really meant a lot to me is that acceptance of difference. Not tolerance, acceptance of difference. And a really conscious decision on the part of um, all of the people who work here at Billinook to, to commit to that element of difference and there are so many people here, staff and students, <laughs> who are all different in their own ways um, and all have different talents, different skills, different abilities um, and are respected and valued for those. So, um, yeah, Billinook does make a difference and Billinook truly is an open entry school. So we do take all comers, accept all comers, and accept them on their own terms. And that's what's most important. Um, with regard to uh, a recognition of um, difference, 
uh, we've had to work hard at that. Uh, and I think that uh, there have been times when we haven't done it as well as we could. And nevertheless, I think it's true to say that this school is really quite remarkable from that point of view. We joined the Safe Schools Coalition, I don't know how many years ago now, when, when it really wasn't something that schools felt it was appropriate to do. Um, it was appropriate for us because we believe in the rights of the individual to determine their own life and to make their own life choices. Yeah. What do you think has changed the most since you started here at Billanook? Physically, the school has changed, quite obviously. When I started here, it was pretty much brand spanking new. And now, of course, it's not 28 years down the track. Um, and we're in a process of refurbishment now. Uh, the other physical things that have changed, uh, when I started here, senior school was in year nine. And there was no primary school, for example. We had grade four to grade six in the performing arts building, because it was the primary school then. And that's what the primary school was, grade, grades four to six. So that's changed dramatically, quite obviously. Um, the trees have grown. We have neighbours now. We didn't have neighbours then. Um, so there were just paddocks around the school. Um, the things that, though, that really haven't changed is the heart and soul of the school. And I was listening to our founders talking uh, at the beginning of the year at a board meeting, and they were talking about why they started this school. And you know what? That hasn't changed. That hasn't changed. And that's why I've been here this long as well because the things we were just talking about, individual differences, respecting and valuing individual difference, acceptance, um, our really strong commitment to social justice um, is, is something I'm really proud of, that this school really does well. Um, our notion of service to others, you know, th those things are at the heart and soul of Billanook. And there's a, a saying that developed a few years ago that you've probably heard, beyond academic excellence. And, um, you know, it, it, it might be a catchphrase, but in actual fact, what that means for Billanook is that, yes, academic excellence is important here, but beyond that, what is more important is, is building the capacity of young people and old people <laughs> like me um, to actually develop to their full potential. And developing people's values as yeah. well as their... Absolutely. Values are really, really strong in this school and I think it's, it's clear to everybody what our values are. So that hasn't changed. So you're finishing up your time here at Billanook. Where will your journey go after Billanook? I'm finishing at Billanook because my husband has been working in Rwanda since October 2012. He's, uh, he's actually Ugandan by birth, but ethnically he's Rwandese. Now, in, in Africa, uh, there are 52 different countries and um, Uganda is right alongside Rwanda and historically people have left Rwanda as refugees uh, for a whole range of reasons and my husband's family was one of those families who left Rwanda and came to settle in Uganda originally as refugees. So he was born in Uganda, but he continued and his family continued to practice their own cultural values and heritage. And Kinyarwanda is his first language. So 
So it was pretty special for him being able to go to Rwanda for the first time ever uh, and uh, be able to give something back to the country that his father was born in. Um, he's working for the government there on contract as an IT advisor. So he's actually implementing their national broadband network which is a pretty big job and pretty exciting. So um, he went on a seven-month contract originally and I wasn't prepared to give up Billinook for seven months. <laughs> and so at that stage we said, OK, let's wait and see how things work out. As it happens, I expect now that we'll be there for probably two or three years at least. And who knows, after that, what's going to happen. But I'm hoping that when I go, I'll be able to contribute to the country in some way as well, whether it's to work in a school or whether it's to work um, for the education department there, training teachers, or whether it's a dream I've had to start a school, maybe, uh, or do something completely different. Uh, maybe to work with women in some way. Um, so I've, I, I want to take Billinook's service mentality with me and uh, hopefully make a difference somewhere else. So that's why I'm leaving Billinook. It's pretty exciting. You mentioned that your husband is from Uganda yes. and originally Rwandanese. Um, how did you happen to meet your husband in the first place? <laughs> Okay, we were um, both at university. He came here as a student when he was 18. And when he came here, he was, uh, he was coming from a country which was ruled by a dictator called Idi Amin. And it was a, a, a pretty unsafe place to be. So he came here to study because he was originally to go to to London University on a scholarship and Armin cancelled all those scholarships to buy arms and as it turned out Steve was then able to get a different kind of scholarship to come to Australia so it was just happenstance that he came here he was doing electrical engineering I was doing arts I had a very close friend who um, who was involved, had a relationship with a, another African guy and uh, we were members of a, a, a club at university called the Afro-Australian Club and that's how we met, at a party, as you do. And so, yeah, that's, and, and so my husband has actually lived here longer than he's lived in Africa. So when people say to him, where do you come from? He says, Australia. And then they look at him and go, no, that can't be true. Where do you really come from? So, yes. What sort of, you're in contact with him at the moment, obviously. What kind of differences do you think he would notice coming from um, Uganda and Rwanda to Australia and then back there again, culturally and mentally and physically? Hmm. It's a really good question. I think that um, one of the greatest differences for him and one of his frustrations now, interestingly enough, is that he's seen as a foreigner. Even though he speaks the language and he understands the culture and he looks the same as everyone else, he's seen as a foreigner because of the habits that he's adopted. For example, he walks more quickly than everybody else. He does things more quickly. Um, it takes a long time to process things there. Uh, so the way things are done are quite different to the way things are done here. Thank you for allowing us to come in today. We've really appreciated learning about the school from your point of view and we can really see how the school's grown ourselves now. And we both, me and Zoe and Mr. Oates and the rest of the school really do wish you the best.
Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you. And I want to wish the very best to you for the rest of your journey at Billinock. And also, also uh, a very special thank you to you and to the whole Billinock community for um, what has been an amazing ride. So um, all the best to everybody at Billinock. Thanks very much. <laughs>